So in the last two years, as a result of the pandemic, many of us have spent lots of time working or studying from home, which we would not otherwise have done. Now imagine if we had this pandemic in 2010. The average internet speed was enough for about one HD video stream and not much else. Office technology typically consisted of landline calls and emails, and the data and information for organisations to run was typically held in servers on-premise, which meant the only way to do your job was to go to the office. Fast forward to today, and the average internet speed is 20 times faster. Most organisations use cloud providers, which means information can be accessed instantly and remotely. So looking back 10, 20 years ago, for me and many others, working from home would not have been productive or even possible. In the US, amongst people who could work from home in 2020, 71% of people did so. Could they have done 15 years ago? I don't think so. With that technological innovation, the hit to the global economy would have been far worse than the 4.4% contraction we suffered in 2020 which was the worst since the Great Depression of the 1930s. So what enabled us to rapidly shift to work from home? Well, fast connectivity, virtual working, and cloud infrastructure. So all of these meant we could access what we needed and interact remotely. These technological advances have made human life more resilient and sustainable, even in the face of a major global pandemic. So now let's look out further into the future and think about what this idea of the change in workplace really means. What's the impact of other emerging technologies on where we work, live, and what are the other impacts for society? So, increasing internet connection speeds has enabled many of us to work productively from home, but it's the availability and location of that connectivity that dictates where you work and therefore live. So currently, you're probably restricted to living and working in locations where you have good, wired, broadband internet connectivity. So, but what if you could get great connectivity anywhere? So 5G now means that we can get high-speed, over-the-air over internet. Average cellular speeds have increased with each generation, and with 5G we can now get speeds of over 100 megabits per second. That's enough for multiple 4K video streams, it's comparable to most broadband internet providers. So there is a catch, however. With 5G, it typically has a shorter range, which means we need a large number of ground stations to actually um, put it to use. So what can fill this connectivity gap and give us access to the internet and even harder to reach locations? So this is where space technology comes in. So a number of organisations are now building satellite constellations in space that can give us access to high-speed internet. All you need to connect is a satellite dish and to point it at the sky. The best known of these is Starlink from SpaceX, which plans to put 42,000 satellites into low Earth orbit. This has the potential to, be, to produce speeds of up to one gigabit per second. So this can connect hard-to-reach rural locations and communities where it's too expensive and time-consuming to lay down fibre cable or put up 5G base stations. So today, 47% of the world's population doesn't have access to the internet. In the US alone, 60 million people don't have access to broadband internet speed. Satellite internet can connect many of these people. You could be in a remote mountain hub or a boat in the middle of the ocean and still access high-speed internet. So as we've seen during the pandemic, it's hard to replicate in-person human interaction, presence, collaboration. So the metaverse has the power to change that. You might have heard of this as the latest buzzword in technology. A lot of the, the big technology firms are now investing huge amounts in the metaverse. It's been described as the next generation of the internet, or Web 3.0. But what does it mean? So the metaverse is the convergence of social platforms, augmented and virtual reality, and blockchain technology. It's a virtual space that allows people to interact in a more immersive way where the physical and the virtual worlds converge. 
For example, it could be a virtual environment where you have an avatar representing yourself. So one great example of the metaverse is gaming. Games such as Fortnite and Roblox. Fortnite has um, integrated social events. Players can attend concerts live with their, with their avatars. In these interactive worlds, you can buy and sell land, digital merchandise, hang out with friends, customize your look, in much the same way as you can in the physical world. So what this means for work is that we can create virtual collaborative environments that allow us, allow us to interact in immersive ways using virtual reality, and to feel a sense of being physically, physically present in a space. This is ideal for, for meetings, learning, networking, and collaboration. So could the office of the future be entirely virtual? Will our children of today, the office workers of the future, are growing up with part of these virtual experiences? So not only as the technology advances, but as these new generations enter the workforce, we'll see increased adoption of the metaverse for work. So what does it mean for where you live if you don't have to go to an office? So say today, like me, you work at London Bridge. This map shows the 90-minute uh, commute time from where you need to get to work. So now let's uh, change our assumptions. Now with these new technologies, let's assume you can connect anywhere in the world and you can work within three hours by time zone. That means you can work anywhere in Europe, Africa, most of the Middle East, even parts of South America. That's one third of the land mass of the world and a bunch of ocean as well. Anywhere you have power, you can now connect and work. So what does that mean for the cost of living? Well, the biggest expenditure is typically accommodation. So you don't have to work and live anymore in expensive locations like San Francisco, New York, and London. What about Cape Town, Lisbon, or Milan? Those locations are 50 to 80% cheaper. Or if it doesn't matter when you get work done, what about Auckland and New Zealand? So when thinking about work, virtual working, we're no longer tied to certain locations or even cities. You can choose to live in a cheaper location and by reducing your cost of living, have a better quality of life. So these converging technologies will further enable remote working, allowing you to work and live anywhere. But what does this mean for job opportunities? So you're no longer confined to working for organizations with offices where you can physically commute to. You can work and be connected anywhere in the world. You can have rich collaborative experiences virtually with colleagues, which are only gonna get better over time. So not only can you work from anywhere, but any job can also come to you. You can work for an organization based anywhere in the world. You can access new and interesting opportunities that you couldn't previously. And for organizations, they can now access global talent pools, where previously they could only employ people either within a commutable radius or willing to relocate. So a German car company that needs to hire more software developers but can't find enough in Germany, they can now employ people remotely in New Zealand. Or a technology firm in Silicon Valley that can't attract talent because the cost of living is too high. Now they can employ people in remote Minnesota. So why will all organizations shift to adopting remote and virtual working? Because what we're seeing now is employees are demanding it, which means the best employees will go to the organizations that provide it. So other organizations will have to follow. So what are the other positive impacts for society of this work from anywhere future? Well, let's think about your personal health and, and well-being. So commuting is physically bad for you. You sit down a lot, it can be stressful, you're less active, it can give rise to obesity and back problems. But freeing up that time every day, it can be spent with family, perhaps on childcare or exercise, keeping fit, taking care of your mental well-being. You can now live closer to nature and areas of natural beauty, which has been shown to have a large positive impact on mental well-being. So and one challenge for many people starting their careers, perhaps like, like you guys here, is that um, the cost of buying a property can now be many multiples of income. The ability to live anywhere can, can dramatically increase the financial well-being for this kind of demographic. 
Now let's think about diversity and inclusion. Now in many countries, the burden of early, early years childcare falls disproportionately on young women. Others may have disabilities that makes travel or relocation more difficult. Or perhaps people need to look after sick or elderly relatives. This is where a virtual working world can promote a more equal society. If we can remove the dependency of both working time and place, then people can access more opportunities with more organisations in more locations. Any bias based on an individual's personal commitment and lifestyle are removed. And not only is diversity good because it's a good thing for society, companies with diverse management teams on average have 20% higher revenues. They just perform better. And lastly, what does it mean for climate change and the environment? In the world of remote working in the virtual office, the commute is not needed at all. Remote and virtual environments reduce the need for travel altogether. Long haul business travel in particular has a large negative impact on the environment. Effective and collaborative remote working can massively reduce carbon emissions as we've less need to move our physical selves and instead can teleport our virtual selves anywhere in the world. So what industries are likely to be disrupted by the shift to virtual working in the metaverse? Well, with retail, we saw a shift in value from traditional retailers in the high street to online marketplaces like Amazon and eBay. The value of corporate real estate globally is $33 trillion. So for just a small portion of this value to transfer to the technology companies building the metaverse, it's likely to be the biggest company in the world. So the same is true for other industries like higher edu education. Learning in higher education could be transferred to entirely virtual worlds, delivering new kinds of learning experiences, not restricted by physical space and capacity, much cheaper than today, therefore also making it more accessible. So I think this future is exciting. For a long time, our health, well-being, cost of living, equality, the environment are all tied to when, how, and where we work. The convergence of technologies, 5G, uh, satellite internet, the metaverse, cloud computing, all these taken together mean we're heading for a virtual workplace. It may not be fully virtual today and in the interim hybrid where a combination of office and home are used depending on the type of work that needs to get done. But the direction of travel seems clear. And if that's towards a better, more equal, healthy, and environmentally conscious world, then that's a good thing.